Hi, I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you today how you can use business sequences in Global. So typically when you have a Global application and business process instances or case instances, you always have an identifier for those. Those identifiers are really technical. They are long text, basically uh, just a few characters, a UUID, and uh, humans typically are not able to remember those uh, when they are searching for something. That's the reason why you can also generate a business specific sequence number, which you then can use that a human is easily able to identify. Now let's get started. And therefore we go to global design. In global design, we have the possibility to create as always, a new app, so let's just call it a business sequence test. And in that, I'm going to do model. So let's just create a process model. You could also use a case model and call that sequence test. And in this uh, process model, I am going to define my process sequence. So that process sequence is basically the sequence which is then used or initialized as soon as the process starts. Let's just call that sequence test one. And in here, I am going to configure the sequence. The sequence itself uh, has a few configuration possibilities. So with minimum digits, we can define how long the sequence is going to be. So we can just specify, for example, five here. With a prefix, we can say uh, that is prefixed with something, for example, test dash, and we will have test dash followed by five numbers. We can also add a suffix in case uh, you would like to have something afterwards. For example, I just now added dash BS for business sequence. We can define with which number it should start, how much it should increment. In case this is positive, it is going to increase, obviously. In case it's negative, it's going to decrease the number. We have max and min values, which allow us to uh, keep the sequence in a given range. When that range is basically uh, full, then it will start at the you know, min or max value depending on where we ended. So when we increment it and reach the max value, we are going to uh, come with the min value next as long as we have checked allow cycle. When we don't check that, it will then throw an error since there are no numbers left on our sequence. I'm not going to specify min and max values now. Let's just go ahead and save that. And then we can go back to our process where we can define a variable name for our business sequence. So let's just call that sequence variable. And then we can also define the process instance name, which helps us basically to identify it. And there we can also use our um, sequence variable itself. So let's just call it here uh, test and then the sequence, a sequence variable. And with that, we should have a process instance name, uh, basically. My process, I'm going to keep simple for now. So let's just not have anything in there. And then we are going to publish that. And when we now go to global work, there we can create a new uh, process instance with our sequence test. And we are going to see that this here has now test, then test dash the sequence number I generated, and then dash the suffix es for business sequence. And I create the ne next one. I uh, will see that this now has the number two and so on. So with that, we basically have now the possibility to have numbers over here. Sometimes you might need such kind of numbers also within your process and that you can do as well with an uh, initialized variable task or any other task where you can uh, execute expressions. So here we could say that's another sequence and we would like to evaluate expression here and we would like to use here sequence next value from a given sequence and here we need to specify the name of our sequence. So let's just call that test sequence two, but we still would need to create that sequence. So maybe we will just do that next. 
I'm going to save that and then I'm going to create a new uh, sequence. Therefore, let's click on other here and then on sequence. And here we call the test sequence two. And we ensure that this key is actually the key which we entered before. So those need to be the same. And we just call that uh, prefix inline dash. And we are going to start with one and we increment two, for example, just that we have a little bit uh, more things in here. And uh, we are going to now next uh, show that variable, which we called another sequence. I am going to do that with a user task in here. Uh, just call that as the sequence number here in the description. And then once we start that, we should see that we now have two sequences, one for the process instance and one basically in this case for my specific user task. So we have here in line one, since I didn't specify it basically uh, that it should have a prefix, we do not have a prefix for that uh, sequence. So that one had the minimum digits, this one doesn't, while we still have the inline file. Now we could look how it is incrementing now by two. Just start the next one. We see we have directly after inline two, uh, inline one, the inline three. We skip the inline two. And with that, you can use uh, sequences at several different places. We also have a uh, generate sequence task. We could have used here instead of using an expression. Let's maybe replace this one here and uh, add a generate sequence task in here. A generate sequence task, we can uh, easily link to our test sequence too. Uh, we can specify uh, the variable name here and say another sequence. And uh, with that, we can basically go ahead and, uh, and save that. We have here also the option to generate a sequence number. In this case, it will rather provide you a number instead of providing you a string. So that's one option which you can specify uh, if you want to. Now let's just go ahead and uh, execute it again. And we see now we have inline five and it now executed that we see here on the process, here our generate sequence task rather than the init variable task, which we have had before. With that, you have all the different modeling capabilities to model sequences. And we just need to look at how you can uh, use them then uh, once they are in production. And therefore, we can go ahead and uh, go to Flowable Control. In Flowable Control, you have the utilities in here. And here you have sequence definitions where you can basically see our two sequences. And you also have sequence values. For the sequence values, you see basically here the current values. Once I um, now go ahead and create a new sequence test, we should see that rather than having five in here, we now have six and seven in here, just because the test sequence two increments basically faster. We can, if we want to update the value or the delete the value that it will start from the beginning. With that, we reach the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Thank you.